it is, John. I mean, it's kind of windy. It's warm outside, you know. Uh, it's I'm been... not feeling, man. I'm just, you know, a little sluggish today. Do you have your coffee today? I don't drink coffee. Yeah, that could be a problem, couldn't it? Anyway, folks, it's Friday. It's a little after one. And you're listening to Santa Cruz Hometown Station and 1220 KHTS. This is the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John. It's the Radio Digest version of the Santa Cruz Gazette and Free Classifieds for all you need to know to be in the know. How are you feeling, John? I'm great, man. That's a great That's a How's great your thing. energy level? Perfect. Why wouldn't you be? Good. So you can carry the show today. I think I'm going to... Today? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Isn't that like more? Whoa. Why is today any different than any other day? <laughs> so, John, I heard a rumor. Uh, you were yeah. at the uh, meet and greet forum. I did go to the Kenya Country Advisory Council meet and greet forum on Wednesday. So, w- what exactly is the uh, um, procedure for the meet? And well, okay. Greet? Well, what they're doing is they're taking uh, four or five candidates, depending, because there's now an odd number. I'm assuming they're going to have thirteen, to do, right? Yeah, they're going to have to do four, four, and five unless people drop out or whatever. Anyway, um, and they give them the time to come in and talk and introduce themselves for a couple minutes, and then they face questions from the general audience. So this is unlike any of the other forums that will be coming up where they're all prepared questions where the candidates are made aware of the questions ahead of time so they can prepare. This one, they have to be you know, quick on their feet. It's off the cuff. It's yeah. off the cuff. And the problem with a, with a format like this is that you get questions that are very, very specific and not general, and they don't really give you a whole lot of information. Now, if it were me and I go up there and I go, hey, can we put a stop sign on my block, you know, what do you think about putting a stop sign on my block? That's not a really good question for the right. for the entire community. Right. Uh, and I think that was a lot of it. There are a lot of, of agenda I say, type I questions. Say, I, w- I was going to say I was going to say, s- say personal interest, not necessarily special interest okay. questions. But I think that was a lot of it. You know, there are people that are very passionate about the library. There's a lot of library questions. There are people that are very passionate about the environment. You know, and and fracking and global warming. And I'm going, well, you know. That doesn't really relate to the city, does it? It, it's, it can. I mean, it, it, would it be what I would run my city council election on? No. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't care about. I know the, the, the whole carbon footprint thing. And, and there's stuff the city can do to, to be aware of that. But I think we've got bigger problems, bigger fish to fry. All right. Well, John, let's get right down the nitty gritty. Let's get to the bottom line. Because the bottom line is the bottom line. Well, unless there's another bottom line, in which case the bottom line is the second to so the bottom line. So, in your like, opinion, jeez, <laughs> in your opinion, who won it? Who's the winner well, of this I, debate, so to speak? Uh, well, there's there's a couple things that I, I noticed. One, uh, people played to their personalities. Um, they, nobody came out and and did anything to shock anybody. I don't think there was anything that I went, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't see that side of this guy's personality, or I didn't see this person. I won't say guy because Gloria was there as well. Um, I didn't see this candidate's uh, analytical side come out, or I didn't see this candidate's thoughtful side come out. They were exactly who you thought they were. If you knew them going in, they didn't change that much. Uh, I think well, there, there were four of them there. There's Dante, uh, Gloria, D- Dwayne, and Alan. Okay, those are the four city council and or city council candidates that were there. So none of the incumbents. Were none of the incumbents. One. The incumbents I think are coming next month. Uh, and you can check the CCAC website. Uh, it's, it's interesting to go. It was interesting to go. Um, as far as who won, you have to define winning. No, I don't think anybody lost. I think there are a couple of times where I scratched my head going, really? Uh, I think... Uh, so there was no faux pas where somebody the, regretted what they said? No, or, there was no faux pas like last time we should annex Jake's way to Palmdale or anything right. like that. We won't go into that too much. Uh, I think Alan Ferdman s- came across as a little... Uh, I want to say more advanced at this point in time in the campaign. Uh, it was very easy to tell exactly what he was talking about and exactly what his his vision is. Uh, some of the others were very political in answering the, the big questions as far as their vision. They they kind of, you know, we want, all want to listen. We all want to, you know, make Santa Clarita a better place to live. Alan came across with some significant ideas, you know, a library commission, uh, things along those lines. Um, now, do you think some of that had to do with the um, the procedure of the f- of the forum, where the public was asking? Do you think they'll exhibit a different behavior, if you will, when they're asked hard questions? I think I think they'll have to answer those hard questions. I, now, okay, and and and, and th- maybe there's an elephant in the room, but it is the Kenya Country Advisory Council, and it's something that Alan Ferdman has been involved in for years. So there's a, I think there might have been a little hometown advantage. There wasn't anybody who was was against anyone else. It wasn't it, it wasn't a, a very 
acrimonious debate with a lot of yelling and screaming and gnashing of teeth. But I think there was there's a little bit of hometown advantage. I'll give him that. Um, but I also think that he did a very good job of answering all of the questions in detail, where sometimes some of the other candidates had a tendency to kind of fluff it off a little bit. Okay. Did the uh, subject of the district voting come up where we vote yeah, that was district? Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Somebody did ask whether the city charter should be amended to include district voting. And voting for a mayor. And voting for a mayor. Um, pretty much, with the exception of Gloria, the answer was, oh, absolutely yes. And, uh, and, and Alan actually came up with a full-time mayor. Let's vote for a full-time mayor, which I thought was an interesting proposal. Um, Gloria had some interesting thoughts on that because apparently, I guess, the, the school board had done some demographic research. And she was of the opinion that, you know, whoa, Nelly a little bit. Let's take a little bit of a break and see what the demographic research says with regard to the districts because it was a lot harder to show that the minorities are going to be represented properly. And I, th I thought that cautious approach was probably the right thing to do. But my question would be, do they have, if the in the lawsuit that the folks have brought against the city to change our voting, do they have to prove that? Well, about the, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think there's some issues there. Uh, I have not read the lawsuit, and that's one of the things I was probably going to do sometime when I'm completely bored <laughs> and have no life. Um, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> like I, tonight? No, nah, not, not, not <laughs> like tonight. Not like this weekend. Um, but we don't have to get into that now. The, uh, I, I think there's, there's ways to settle that lawsuit. There's ways to, to slowly go about doing it. Interesting thing is, are they going to be like Palmdale, where Palmdale didn't certify the election they had because of the lawsuit? Is this whole election going to be completely moot, mute, moot, moot, um, because of the lawsuit? Are they, are the candidates who get elected not going to be able to be be uh, certified? So uh, there's a lot of questions out yeah. there, and I mean those are things that, right. that need to be taken into consideration. Right. So let's see how it plays out. It, well, there's going to be a lot of these forums, and we're going to get into them and throughout the months till we have the election in April. So stay tuned, folks. And one thing I'd like to say is some people, you know. A lot of people say that apathy runs rampant here in the city when it comes to um, running for oh, the, the, the city the, council election. Yeah, the, the, the turn voter turnout is ridiculously yeah. low for and something like this. It really can actually affect you and your family. So I would strongly ad ad advise everybody to get into it, pay attention, and get out and vote. But Absolutely. right now we're up against the clock. You're right, and you're listening to Santa Cruz's hometown station, the Gazette Radio Hour, AM 1220 KHTS. We'll be right back.